Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu began a four-day trip to Africa today with a tribute to his older brother. Netanyahu arrived in Uganda, where he marked the 40th anniversary of a raid to rescue a hijacked Air France flight crew and mostly Israeli passengers. The Prime Minister's brother, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Netanyahu, was a commander during the historic raid on Entebbe. He was struck by a bullet and killed that day. Despite Jonathan's death, the raid marked a turning point in the fight against terrorism. Senior correspondent Eric Sean sat down with the Prime Minister to talk about the loss of his brother. Long before radical Islamic terrorism so challenged us, Israel stunned the world with the daring and brazen raid on Entebbe. Terrorists for the Palestinian cause hijacked Air France Flight 139 from Tel Aviv to Paris and ordered it to land at Entebbe, Uganda. They held more than 100 hostages in the old airport terminal under the guns of Idi Amin's army and threatened to execute them unless 53 Palestinian militants were released from prison. Shimon Peres, former Israeli president and prime minister, was the defense minister. I knew in my heart that if he cannot bring it back, the hijacked people, they are not going to do anything. They took a chance. Israeli commandos in four Hercules transport planes flew 2,500 miles from Israel in the dark of night. After landing, the Israeli convoy in two Jeeps and a Mercedes painted to look like Amin's sped to the terminal. The mission was dramatized in the movie Raid on Entebbe. All but four hostages were saved, and one Israeli commando was killed. Amir Offer, the first commando to kill one of the terrorists, saw his commander fall. While running, I heard from the, my left-hand side that Yoni is shouting advance, and then he was hit. I could see it. The dashing 30-year-old lieutenant colonel, Jonathan or Yoni Netanyahu, was mortally wounded. Born in New York City, he attended Harvard and was the older brother of now Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I remember him as a leader when he was six years old, uh, and he, he was a wonderful brother. He was, a, he was warm, uh, he was compassionate, he was considerate, very brave, very smart. We sat in the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem, now his, 40 years after Israeli leader Yitzhak Rabin gave the mission the green light. I think Entebbe is a remarkable story of what that a democracy facing the most oppressive odds can win the day if you're armed with sufficient courage and resolve. Yoni's death made him a national icon, but for the Netanyahu family, it was a deeply searing and crushing blow. Netanyahu was 26, living in Boston, he heard about the raid on the radio. I called up my younger brother and I said, well, is Yoni back? I didn't ask, was Yoni there? Did Yoni command us? I just asked him a simple question, is Yoni back? Because I knew who would conduct this raid. And he said, not yet. Uh, and then I heard on the, uh, on the news that they said that 103 hostages were rescued and one officer died. And I said, why, why did they say officer? They'd say soldier, but they said officer. So maybe it's one out of 20. You were doing the odds in your mind. I was doing the odds, but they said officer. And then later in the evening at night when um, my brother Ido called me, I knew. I knew. And it was Ido. He told me that he only had died in Antibia and my world collapsed, but all I could think of at the time was that I have to reach my parents. My father was teaching um, at uh, Cornell University, and I had to reach him and my mother. Um, and so I drove all night from Boston to uh, Ithaca. It was uh, a horrible thing. Came to the path of their home in Ithaca in the morning. Saw my father, who was a professor, um, walking back and forth, sort of lost in thought. His hands clasped behind his back, sort of walking back and forth. And all of a sudden, through the living room window, he sees me walking up the path and he has this look of surprise which changed in a heartbeat and he understood and he 
he understood. He knew. He knew, and I came in, and he, you know, and I heard my mother scream, and it was uh, actually worse, worse than hearing about Yoni's death. Uh, it was. It's often said that uh, the worst thing you can do as a prime minister or as a commander in the army is to tell uh, a family that they they lost their their son. But now I was telling my parents that they lost their son, uh, my older brother. I have to say that this was the most clearly the most difficult moment in my life. I've had it, quite a few, but nothing like this. You got that phone call from Ido at two in the morning. Mm. It's a seven hour drive. Mm. What was going through your mind? Torture. Torture. Anguish. It's like having your skin flayed while you're still alive. You came back to Israel, the services, mm -hmm. and how did you deal with that? I don't know how we all dealt with it. I don't know where my parents found the courage to go on. I think the loss of a brother is a terrible thing. But the loss of a son is, is more terrible. And I often wonder about that when I have to, when I talk to the bereaved families and bereaved parents of Israeli soldiers who fall while defending this country. I tell them about this. I don't speak to them as a prime minister. I speak to them as part of that same larger bereaved family. For Netanyahu and many others, Yoni is an inspirational symbol of what we now need to face the terrorist threat. They speak about his his clarity and courage and his coolness of judgment. And I think uh, ultimately these are the qualities that won the day. And do these qualities continue today? Do you feel that we have them as we fight terrorism? I think we have them. I think it's important that the whole world, one, recognizes this threat, second, unite to fight it. We're not just fighting our individual battle, we're fighting this common battle against something that threatens all of humanity. The raid in Entebbe stands as a defining moment in the fight against terrorism. Sadly, that threat remains, not just here in the Middle East, but increasingly as part of our lives. In Jerusalem, I'm Eric Sean, Fox News. Thank you, Eric.